I'm gonna talk about five reasons why the life insurance business is a racket. If you're looking to sell life insurance or any kind of insurance really for that matter, and you're looking for some inside baseball and how the business really works, then this is the video for you. My name is David Duford. I own DeFord Insurance Group. I train and recruit agents nationally to sell final expense, Medicare, annuities, and ACA insurance. If you'd like to learn more about how we do business, go to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ for more details. Okay, let's get right into it. So I'm putting this video together because I've been in the business since 2011. I, like probably a lot of you watching right now, uh, we're attracted to the life insurance business, but realize the truth of the matter as I progressively got involved interviewed with agencies and did my research that all isn't what it seems when it comes to being a life insurance professional and as i have acquired experience and wisdom as an insurance agent specializing in the final expense business now as an agency owner in a multitude of lines like we said earlier final expense medicare nudies and aca i put together this video because i want to make sure that you've got the necessary understanding of what you possibly may get into and how if you pick the wrong organization and the wrong process that this business can absolutely seem exactly like a racket. So number one, probably the biggest reason why a lot of people do not do well and why a lot of people think this business is uh, crooked is because the MLM culture really permeates everything in the life insurance business. Go to any job board, Craigslist, possibly people telling you about the business. The likelihood is probably three out of four of those organizations are heavily induced under the spell of multi-level marketing culture. Now the truth of the life insurance business being it's a direct sales uh, type of sales model is that there are downlines in our organizational hierarchies that are uh, like multi-level marketing, but what really turns people on and, and ruins a lot of people is the cultural influence from an MLM perspective. For example, uh, when I say MLM, what do I mean? Well, we're talking about that rah-rah culture, the Kool-Aid drinking culture, almost the cult like culture that a lot of these organizations have where they put emphasis not on developing you as an agent but instead developing you to recruit other people to recruit other people where only the top of the pyramid thrives and the bottom really struggles if it looks like mlm it probably is as you start to do your due diligence look at agencies to join look for places to sell life insurance if you see that stop what you're doing continue to do your due diligence and find another organization instead. The MLM is a big problem in this business and it is to be avoided if you want to avoid life insurance sales from being a racket. Number two on the list here is that agencies win even if you lose. Now, let me explain a little bit here because this may seem a little foreign to you because shouldn't someone win or an organization win when others win? Well, that seems like it makes sense. Well, if your salespeople win, shouldn't you win? What a lot of these MLM organizations, just like mentioned a moment ago, have realized is they can make money even if you don't make a sale. Again, they make a sale or they make a commission off of your sales, a small portion. That's what's called an override. That's how my agency uh, profits. That's how most organizations profit. But one added element that especially these MLMs do now is they sell you leads at an incredible markup while also selling them multiple times to multiple agents within the agency. Right now, at the recording of this uh, video, there's a well-known life insurance MLM that is going through a class action lawsuit process where part of that allegation is that the agency is making three to four million dollars in net profit selling junk leads every single week. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, you're innocent until proven guilty, of course, but the point is, is that this organization, plus many others out there, and they're the biggest ones that recruit, monetize and create an income from buying junk, old data, old leads, and then marking it up tremendously, and then reselling it a multitude of times so they can win and you don't. Now, why would they do that? Because they make a lot of money doing it, as this uh, lawsuit, class action lawsuit says. 
Uh, but they also just figure that most people won't be successful. So we'll string them along, tell them promises that we can't keep about how great this business is, but make some kind of money saying that these leads are like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So again, how do you avoid that? You find organizations that don't profit until you profit. They don't win until you win. And that means that the only way they can win is when you win by making a sale. And that's how you know that the relationship is at its most equal. Number three on the list here is that sales and marketing training is marginalized. Now, what do I mean by that? Again, a lot of the time training is about recruiting other people or training is about buying these crappy leads and then throwing you to the wolves. That is the normality of most of the life insurance agencies and their recruiting habits in this business. They don't emphasize true sales prospecting training, true sales training itself, how to convince a stranger to buy from you and how to duplicate this process into a predictable system. Instead, what they're more interested about, again, is the recruitment side and just throwing it up against the wall and hopefully something will stick without the necessary time and effort it takes to train people into being professional salespeople. Number four, and this is a, a not so much of a racket issue, but it's really the nature of this business. It's that only the strong survive. Again, one of these big MLM uh, organizations, one of the leaders at this uh, organization has gone on camera a number of times and says, I believe anybody can do this business successfully. I believe that this is truly within the reach of a lot of different people, no matter what their background is. And that is 100% wrong. This is a business where only the exceptional do well. This is a business where only those people who work hard and make it their life's commitment that they might see some kind of success in this business. The truth of the matter is in the life insurance business, maybe 5% to maybe 10% survived the first couple of years of the business. I was one of those who was lucky because I had failed out within my first year, but did not quit. And luckily, just through the process of getting back to fundamental survived, but the vast majority of people who experienced that absolutely fail and never come back. So the truth of the matter is that only the strong survive in this business. If you are not going to be committed and you're not finding an organization that's gonna be as just as committed as you should be, the odds are absolutely stacked against you. And anybody who suggests otherwise is trying to probably sell you some crappy leads at a huge markup so they can make money off you. Number five, the other thing that's really frustrating about this business is that there is endless amounts of gotcha clauses that really ruin this dream of entrepreneurship that you probably have that you would like to live through the, uh, a, the insurance sales business. Now, what do I mean by gotcha clauses? Well, a lot of organizations out there, what they'll do is they'll you know do this whole pitch about entrepreneurship, making a lot of money, having a lifestyle-oriented business, but as soon as you start to read the contract, and you start to understand what it means and how it goes, you realize that is not the case. For example, a lot of these contracts, you don't own your book of business. You're literally going out there and making the owner of the business rich and not creating your own business. You're essentially an employee that is paid by the benefit of the agency, but you, if you leave or something happens, all that commission retains at the agency level. You take nothing when you, when you are not vested from the first day. Also, a lot of these organizations promise the world but don't deliver. And then when you want to move your carrier affiliations from that said agency to another agency like, say, mine, that might actually train you to be a top producer, they don't release you. They hold you back. The carriers that you enjoy who haven't done anything wrong, it's the agency's fault. The agents won't, agency won't release you. So you got to watch out for the releases. And there's all, all sorts of a host of other issues like the leads issue and the other kind of things. And, and, and it makes this business really a problem. And you'll see a culture that kind of comes out of this onerous restrictive contracts where people basically just play the game of the system. Yeah, they're screwed. There's one organization that takes 10 years to fully own your book of business, a very well-known captive agency. And what they'll do, essentially, if you're two years in, you're doing well, you only own 20% of your business and you just find this out because they don't tell you this stuff up front. Well, you might as well just play the game and uh, bark the uh, rules and, and, and way that they do things so that you can retain this business, hold on, and kind of put on a play 
in order to do well. And that's a, it's a dang shame that that has to happen. It doesn't have to be that way. Again, if you think through, do your due diligence, take your time to find the right organization. So again, you know, I've been in business. I've been doing this since 2011. Obviously, there is a level of success here. Either I'm a part of the racket or I'm hopefully the uh, the person in the desert calling uh, about the truths and the nasty nature of this business. And so there must be, I would hope you would think, a way to get around a lot of these shortcomings. And I want to go over that with you before I end this video because this business is absolutely awesome if you do the right things up front and think through things to avoid the unnecessary, but thankfully, uh, uh, issues that can actually be avoided. So let's go through that. Number one, make sure you avoid the MLM IMOs at all costs. Again, it's pretty easy to find them. Do they talk about stuff? Do they show off their cars, their jets, their boats, their lifestyles? Do they do that kind of stuff? Do they talk about recruiting more than they talk about training you to be a top producer? If that is what you are hearing from the leaders in the organization, run the other way, do more due diligence, and you will find organizations that do not have those values that instead want to help you become a producer that does very well by training, development, and all of that. Number two, join an agency with goal alignment. Okay, so again, I tell my agents who are joining all the time, I'd make nothing off of the lead referrals that I give out because I think it's just terrible what these big MLMs have done, taking money from you guys, turning it into a profit center and laughing all the way to the bank, knowing they're selling you garbage they bought for 50 cents that they now sell for $10 a lead. So you want an organization that doesn't win until you win. That's how my organization works. I don't make a dime until my agent sells something. So everything I'm concerned about is the same that you're concerned about. You want to know how to sell. I want to teach you how to sell. You want to know what leads are best. I want you to get the best leads. You want to get results. I want you to get results because I don't make any money until that happens. So find agencies that have that same level of goal alignment to greatly reduce the racket type of uh, reality that insurance and life insurance sales is. Number three, focus on professional sales development before you even consider agency building. Again, if your organization is telling you to recruit right out the gate, you are in the wrong place. You shouldn't be recruiting a team till you know what you're talking about. Part of the reason so many agents fail is because they're told to go recruit right away, not develop a sense of experience but to go out there and start recruiting and have nothing to give to their recruits. Therefore, people more likely than not fail. Don't fall into that trap of getting into the MLM game right away and building an agency. Instead, get street cred. This is a marathon business, not a sprint business. Develop the requisite training, experience, and knowledge firsthand as an agent in the field or on the phone before you even think about recruiting. It will pay back in dividends I assure you. Number four, find a mentor and duplicate what works. Again, this is a business where you need to think of it like the old apprenticeship type of model. Find an organization and a mentor that actually has had and duplicated success in other people and can show you the results from that, that has been out in the field, that has gotten results like that, which you want to have. And that's who you need to align with. Don't align with someone who is just concerned about MLM. Don't align with somebody who hasn't had actual ups and downs in the experience. Align yourself instead with somebody who has had firsthand experience and will actually take time to coach you on becoming the ideal version of yourself as a life insurance agent. And last but not least, I've mentioned this several times, this is absolutely imperative. You have to do your due diligence, guys. This is not something you flippantly get involved with in the life insurance business. You will be squeezed dry of your money and you will probably lose money nine out of 10 times. So slow down, put the brakes on, do your due diligence, watch my videos, watch other people's videos, interview with multiple agencies. This is a marriage you're about to get involved with. Don't jump in bed with the first person you meet. Take time to get to know the person. Take time to get to know the agency. And when you know it's a match, then fully commit, then go all in. But slow down, do your due diligence because that is what it takes to absolutely avoid the racket reality 
of selling life insurance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so. I do these kind of content pieces every single day, 365 days a week. Leave a comment below if you uh, would like to. And if you would like to learn more about joining my agency, go to daviddufour.com forward slash FAQ to learn more. Thank you as always.